you can manifest things, yeah. but you can't demand things. Yep. And I think there's there's a there's a fine line between demanding and manifesting. And, manifesting. Yep. and people cross that line a lot and they end up getting their feelings hurt. Welcome to another episode of the Root of Everything podcast where we aim to inspire you to find your passion by going out and really seeking out guests who are doing what they love to do. So today we have my boy Kyle Olani Adams. How you doing today, my guy? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Good to have you on the podcast today. Tell everybody who you are. And I know it's a lot of stuff you do, but <laughs> if you could give us a little general way of saying who you are and what you do. Gosh, yeah. um, I think the best way to identify for me <clears throat> would be Renaissance Man. Like mm. That's what I'm about. I'm an artist, entrepreneur. Um, I'm into media studies and production. So it's a lot of stuff going on but uh, mainly an artist. Got you. And then the first real question we ask all of our guests is what's your passion and how would you define success? I think my passion is just creating and cultivating things. Mm -hmm. um, I like I like dreaming big dreams and mm -hmm. then taking the time to actually really you know, make them come true. My definition of success is just unlimited freedom, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've already reached a certain amount of success, but once you reach a certain point, you always want to keep elevating and elevating. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you know, I'm successful, but I want to be more free. successful, more free just mm -hmm. to be able to do, um, you know, whatever I want, basically. Got you. And so throughout your life and finding out all these things about your life and then being able to be somebody that can draw, somebody that can take videos of different things in the sports world, how do you come to find these things in your life um were there inspirations were there things you did where you learned about it where did it mm. come from so when i was younger like 15 i picked up the camera mm. and it was just everything just happened and like yeah. it, it was never forced and like I, I picked it up at a cookout one day and then started taking pictures of my friends and family and then i turned it into a business like i mm. just started going out shooting sweet 16s photo shoots anything just to keep some extra money in my pocket and then I found sports and I, you know, I discovered the stories that I could tell with sports and then just connecting with athletes on a different level and telling those stories. That's what became my, my niche, I guess. And then from there, just growing and growing mm -hmm. and growing and coming and meeting more people and opening more doors and then dreaming bigger dreams and accomplishing those dreams and then saying, you know, just keep building that community. So, um, yeah, that's like, that's, that's how I started. That's how I cultivated, but, you know, in its simplest form, just going out into the world, um, whatever you're interested in, just really digging deep into it mm. and trying to build something rather than, um, you know, accepting. just doing this yeah. and just accepting it for what it is. You can really build community. You can build experiences that like are so dense that like, everything yeah. is not so one dimensional. Yeah. What allowed you to have the perspective that you could do that? Like, I feel like maybe people listening right now, they feel like they have to do things mm -hmm. a certain type of way or they can't think or dream big. Yeah. What allowed you to have that perspective so early on? I think it's definitely my, my parents. Like, mm -hmm. I, was, I was definitely blessed from a young age to be able to experience a lot of things. Like, mm -hmm. um, we never, like, my, my parents were, were successful. They, they raised me well. We never had to struggle for anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Is something that I aspire to have for other people, mm -hmm. just so they can understand. Like, there's a lot of people I know that have the potential to reach mm -hmm. great heights, but they don't have the the financial backing or yeah. the the that family at home that can yeah. be supportive. So that's what we're trying to build now. Is just that that place where we can, you know, just like Jay Z said in his songs, like we need a place to pitch, like we need a mound. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to cultivate now. But yeah, without without that foundation for my parents, just being able to fall. And yeah. get back up knowing somebody's going to be there. That's definitely, you know, the basis for how I dream so big. Yeah, and one of the things for me is whenever I set out what I have to do for the day or whatever it may be, like knowing I have that privilege that my parents gave me the freedom to do this. Mm -hmm. Like not everybody can chase their dreams so early. Yeah. Like some people may have to do certain things for a couple years to even have that Absolutely. window. Um, would you say like that perspective is what pushes you to draw for six, seven, eight hours yeah. or whatever it may be. Is that some of the things that get you going? Yeah, like that definitely it motivates me because uh, the way I see it, there's a lot of people that have become more successful that have had to endure more things than me. Mm -hmm. So with this privilege that I have, mm -hmm. I should be able to, you know, mm -hmm. 
leaps and bounds you know what i yeah. mean like i should be able to accomplish things on a different level uh -huh. so that that's definitely a motivator and just you know just wanting to wanting to eat with other people it's it's not fun yeah. to eat by yourself like Facts. i've experienced it before like reaching success earlier than some of the like my friends and then just not feeling it because we're all not you Here. know eating at the same time so that's definitely another motivator and just building just building yeah. i love since I was a kid, I loved Legos. Like, just, really, I loved just building things. Just sometimes didn't use the, um, didn't use the instructions or anything. Just yeah. seeing what do we have here and what can we turn it into, rather than this is what it should look like. Or you know yeah. what I mean. So you were kind of artist at heart before you even became yeah. an artist. Before I assumed that identity that yes, I am an artist. Mm -hmm. I was definitely always an artist. How were you able to know that? Like, I think. For me, I always had signs of being mm -hmm. able to know, like, oh, like, you could maybe do something that's totally off, like, mm -hmm. the regular things in society. What allowed you to have that awareness? Was it anything that you did? Um, I think especially when you're going to college, like, yeah. I think you kind of figured it out later mm -hmm. on. What, like, what clicked? It was one of the first art shows that I did with my dad, that feeling that I had, like, uh. after, just after, like, selling those pieces and, like, completing them and just to start something, finish it, and then it goes like that. That mm -hmm. means somebody is really appreciating what mm -hmm. you're putting out into the world, and that's a feeling. Everybody just wants to be appreciated. Yeah. And, you know, I, thankfully I've been in a position where all of the work that I've made, somebody is appreciated enough mm -hmm. to buy it. And so that feeling is irreplaceable, just knowing that people are expecting you to make things and they're looking forward to it. It's like, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, so... So going into the actual process of it, um, you do you you have like almost these different worlds, these different hats yeah. you have. What's the difference of perspective when maybe you're drawing, um, mm -hmm. you're drawing something to then when you're putting the camera out and you're mm -hmm. taking videos of someone else? What's the difference in mindset between the two? Yeah, there's like they always intersect, of course, just as a creative. But it's like the world that I created with the camera and the world that I've created with the art is just two totally different mm -hmm. sides of the spectrum. But at the end of the day, like it's all going through me. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's, as long as it's me, as long as it's authentically me, it's always gonna come naturally. And so mm -hmm. I don't try to force too many things. I just try to always keep an open mind and keep the energy flowing through me and just let it come out. But like in terms of prestige, you got like, it's a whole community of like, people that I've like cultivated just me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's, it's that's why it's special to me because, like you growing up. <clears throat> like I was always like the little brother chilling yeah. by himself type of thing. And so when I finally had my own thing to cultivate, mm. that was special for me because this was something like I did totally myself. Yeah, my parents helped me like get the camera equipment and stuff like that. But they, they was my, it, was all, it was always my thing. It was my yeah. hobby. It was my, you know. And so art, being that my dad is an artist and him just being there my whole life as an artist, it's that's something I've almost like inherited from him. Mm, and so okay. it's different. I appreciate it, of course, but I just see it differently than what I see from something that I've grown up mm -hmm. by myself rather than something that I was pretty much born yeah, into. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't even think about that. Like the art side is almost like in your blood. Yeah. But it was almost like, but I'm not gonna just settle for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I, I want them both to, mm, to balance that's out. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. So kind of tell the people what Prestige is, mm -hmm. you know, what really makes it. Like yeah. what, what So it? I first started Prestige as just a photography and video company. And then once I grew and experienced different things, like I've tried everything out with Prestige. I like to call it just the blank canvas. Mm -hmm. Like I've tried to make it an agency before. Okay. <laughs> I've tried to make it a graphic design company before. I've tried to make it a production company before. Um, I just let it be <clears throat> whatever, whatever I'm, I'm up to at the time. Like recently, it's just been capturing stories of of places that I've like, you know, built see or planted seeds and like Roseau mm -hmm. Catholic, like that's just a natural um, story. It's just, mm -hmm. it just happened. Um, the stuff I'm gonna do with my dad, that's just a natural mm -hmm. story. And then the relationships that just branched off because of that, I've just become accustomed to using these, these com this community is just like a playground, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I'll go to the gym with my boy one day and we'll film something, it'll be really great but at the end of the day. We were just going to hoop. Yeah. Like, and now I'm gonna bring yeah. it home and kind of just, you know, work out with it. Um, a theme I'm getting out of this already is like, this didn't seem to ever be like a, a brick wall with you. If if, and I'll explain it more. It's you're ever flowing with whatever happens. Yeah. Like, 
with prestige, you kind of talk about like it was supposed to be this and it was supposed to be this. Some people would say you were failing, you were failing, you were mm-hmm. failing. Um, can you kind of speak on your perspective, almost like in life and with your creative process, mm-hmm. um, and in the importance of just letting things flow? Yeah, you know? it's, I've definitely felt that before, like yeah. the failure, thinking I was I was failing, but that was just something I had to learn. Like mm-hmm. everything is not a failure. It's just like somebody sent me something the other day. It was like this person did this thing a thousand times before they created Apple. This mm-hmm. person did this. This person failed a thousand times before mm-hmm. they did this. It's like, it's not a failure. You're just figuring it out. Because mm. each time you quote unquote fail, you're still like grasping. Like I, there's there's been times where I've created a whole like softwares on my website for a specific idea and the idea flops. Yeah. But it's like, all right, but now I have the infrastructure to mm-hmm. go back and do something with that. So... It's something that you just come with over time. Like yeah. I'm, I'm like five years into it now, so I've seen a lot of things. But I'm still so far. I'm still so young in my career that I got to be open minded. Got to be open to, to everything. But it's just you know, dreams. When you have big dreams, you're gonna have some reality. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and I think yeah, I think that's true. Like you're gonna face reality. It's just your decision to accept it as the finish line. Exactly. Like, I think all the ideas I've had. I'm always very bold, like, this is going to work. And mm-hmm. A lot of times it doesn't work. Yeah. But, like, I'm gathering information. Like, mm-hmm. I mess up, but I go into my next endeavor with yeah. all the information, you know? So I think it's it's pretty special that you're able to continue to flow yeah. with everything. And I think at the end of the day, what makes it special when you're doing what you love to do, at the end of the day, you got the experience. Like, mm-hmm. you got to still enjoy yeah. doing whatever, whatever you were doing. Mm-hmm. You got to be resilient. It's like, if you're a basketball player and after every game that you lose, you shut down completely... Mm-hmm. Like, you'll never be able to, you got to be able to say, all right, we'll get them next game. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when you're out there videotaping, I got to ask, was there an athlete before all this? Like, what what was first? It what was, was it always a fan? What was the, like, first first mm-hmm. was in my hometown, I I started shooting football. Um, as It was just photography okay, at the time. Okay, gotcha. And then, you know. There were some basketball players on the team. I was like, oh, why don't you come, you know, shoot for us yeah. during the basketball season? And then I connected with, uh, his name is Jalil Simmons. He was, mm-hmm. a, he was a basketball player at the time. He was projected D1. And just telling his story, and I was, like, terrible at the time. Mm-hmm. But, like, I had the eye and I had the, I was capturing emotion more than anything. Mm-hmm. My technical skills weren't there, but I was capturing the essence of the moment. And so people knew I had that potential. So I spent a couple of years with Plainfield just, you know, kind of working out there just because it was home. Yeah. And then one summer I met Jesse Jones, Filet. Mm-hmm. Um, he introduced me to so many people in the in the basketball world. And that's when I met uh, the people of Roseau Catholic. Mm-hmm. And then that was it. Like that was that was a spot where I decided, okay, this is where we're going to take this to the next level. Mm. We're going to see it through and we're not going to, we're not going to go record everybody. We're only going to stay here mm. and just make this our thing. Got you. So you just, like, you almost had this intuitive intuitive knowledge that this is the opportunity. Yeah. Like, it was, there's been plenty of times where I was like, yo, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> there's, you got people like Javon Quinterly playing mm-hmm. in Jersey at the time, Louis King, um, Luther Muhammad, like, all these people, Scotty Lewis. I could go, if I really just wanted to do it for views and, yeah. and stuff like that, I can go record all these guys. But, like, for me, it was important to just... Authentic. See, yeah, stay yeah. stay the course and, and build that community with those guys rather than go and try and clout chase. You know what I mean? Would you say, and I think a lot of people deal with this, they love sports, they love whatever it may, may be, and they feel disconnected because maybe they aren't a player. Mm-hmm. Would you feel like, like, I feel like from watching you and hearing from you, like, do you feel like you're a part of it? Like, yeah, like describe sure. how your impact is made, even though you're not putting on sneakers yeah. and playing in the game. It's interesting because I've been... Was using Roseau Catholic as an example. I've been with them so long that before I was the same age as the kids on the team, uh. and now I'm older, and so I'm like the perfect balance between the coaching staff and the players. And there's nobody else on that team that can fill that role. Wow! Because I'm the only one that's like 22, like that can still chill with the guys like they're my younger brothers, and also still chill with the coaching staff like they're my mentors. Mm. And so. That's interesting. That's been a great um, just kind of experience this yeah. year. Like it's it's been it's been it feels like that was just my role, just to be that bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was. And that what was kind cool. of impact have you seen, like literally f- on their lives? Not just you being able to produce content, mm-hmm. but what kind of help and um, amplification have you been able to do? Yeah. So your work? 
with these guys specifically, um, it's like during a basketball game, you got everybody yelling 20 million different things. So you mm -hmm. can really only filter out certain stuff. Mm -hmm. So like on our coaching staff, we got like six coaches on our coaching staff. Say three out of the six coaches they don't listen to, two out of the coaches they'll <laughs> listen to one specific yeah. thing. But you got to be comfortable enough and respect that person enough to really hear them out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Me personally, I don't intrude on the whole basketball IQ. I don't tell yeah. you what plays to make. But if I look at you during the game, I'm like, yo, you need to Yeah. You need to lock in like mentally. You're not you you gotta lock in here, be be one rather than, yo, run this play right here. I guarantee you it's gonna work. Nah. Yeah. That's not they want to hear right now. Either. It's not. Yeah. And so definitely like that comfortability that they have with me, even on a coaching staff level and on a player's uh level, just you know, having somebody that can bridge that gap. Because without that, there's going to be a disconnect between mm -hmm. the kids and the adults. Yeah. Um. Another thing I'm also getting from you is, like, you go deep into something. You're yeah. not, like, even if there's opportunities to go wide and do all these different things, get these different type of people, could you kind of speak on, like, I see it in your branding, like, mm. how, value, how valuable is it to, like, really go deep and to show the details into things? Yeah. It's like... With certain things, I'll go deep, but I'm a very fluid person. Like I'm, mm. I'm the one to test a bunch of things out, and then if I really mess with something, then I'll like dive uh, right into so it. So you make sure it's the right yeah. thing to go deep into. But once you're deep into it, then you can build so much more community out of it. Because, mm. like, say if I'm following a guy like Simeon Wiltshire, right? Am I gonna go get his content and his stories from a guy that only posts two of his best games, mm. or am I gonna go to a guy that? follows him throughout the entire season and has like that's where you're gonna find the the, the real story so gotcha. i feel like surface level you just gotta go you gotta go beyond surface level with everything so like even if i'm doing a one-off like something with uh, a videographer or um if i'm doing a one-off video with an athlete mm -hmm. You're trying to. Steal. I'm still trying yeah. to do something different that it's not going to look like just another mixtape. Because at the end of the day, anybody could. Yeah. Like obviously the technical side, anybody could eventually like I could learn how to work a camera. Exactly. But I can't put the UC on a video at the mm -hmm. particular time. Yeah. Those are things that are invaluable. Yeah. I think. Um. Could you kind of touch on what you're doing to go deep with your current documentary that you're working yeah. on? So with Rozo Catholic, it's been a five year experience of. Just growing for me yeah. personally, just growing as a as a, as a person, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, as a creator, as an artist, and then connecting with these these players and telling their stories. Mm -hmm. So not only is it like a coming of age for them, it's a coming of age for me, and it's like for it to be my first full scale documentary. It's the perfect project mm. because it's my baby. Like it's yeah. what I've been doing. And so, you know, we're really just going to dig deep into the history of the school and the players and their, their personal stories. And then just telling that story of what we accomplished throughout mm. these years. Yeah. And it's going to be special. Man, I, I got to say, just hearing your ideas off camera, it's like, I think it's going to start a movement yeah. of this next, this next wave of how people are creating content for mm. high school students, high school athletes, because... There really hasn't been anybody else that's done it mm -hmm. to any school that isn't a Sierra Canyon or anything mm -hmm. that's... Because the payoff is not... That's true. ...immediate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people with this, it's so oversaturated. Media is so oversaturated and everybody's looking for the the instant... The like, quick buck yeah, or popularity. Like, and I get it. Like, you're trying to build your brand, but like, yo, I'd rather be silent for five years and pop out with the best documentary that you've ever seen rather than... Get a whole bunch of minute long hundred k views. Yeah. Like, Would you say the reason people don't have that mindset is because they're doing it for the wrong reasons? Like they're not partly, in it for the the passion because they genuinely love the story. Partly, partly. I know I I can see some people that don't take this seriously and just do it just for fun. Yeah. And they end up riding that high from getting all these views. And I see the people who are building something that they don't even know what they're building yet mm. but they're they're building something yeah. and but they're getting the credit for it they're getting the they're they're connecting with these players that have um that, that have followings and so when you have a 100k followers you're obviously going to get a bunch of hits no matter what you do yeah. and so you know it's relative like some people just do it to clout chase some people do it because they're building something other people just do it just to do it and do you think that's probably your biggest advantage to then meeting all these different people because mm -hmm you're known for something. Yeah. You also like are going deeper with each athlete. Do you think that's getting you 
to the referrals, to the different push out to different mm-hmm. places. Is that your advantage? Yeah. So the way I've set it up is I've only catered to certain players. Mm. And so it's become exclusive. It's become like a club. It's become like a family, like a community. And people have just wanted to be a part of it. Like mm. at first it was really just me, Khalil, Josh, Nate, and then yeah. whoever was on the Rosa Catholic team at the time. But now it's just become such a, a culture that now you want to add people. You want to add creatives. You want to add entrepreneurs. You want to add athletes to it, but only ones that have that that see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, yeah. that that get it, that understand it. So it's becoming a it's it's growing. And I'm not really putting a timetable on it. Before I used to drive myself crazy saying, Oh, by this point we're gonna be here. Yeah. By this point we're gonna be here. But now it's so it's just fluid. so natural. Yeah. It's fluid now. It's it's beautiful. So you you take the videos, whatever it may be, whoever you're shooting. What's the process like post mm-hmm. taking the video? What's that process? So like? depending on what we're doing, if it's some like short form content, I'll just take it home. I'll maybe have an idea in mind and then spend no more than a few days on it. Mm-hmm. But if it's something like more long term, I may take the video and not touch it for a month mm. just to let it breathe. Like after the Rosa Catholic season, I didn't touch the film. I still haven't touched the film. It's been since March, but I've just been cultivating idea because I know what it looks like. I saw it throughout the entire season. Yeah. Now it's about how do you string these together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, it depends, really. Like, every every time is different. There's some days where I have an idea in my head and, like, yo, let's go to the gym right now, get it off, and I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to finish tonight. Mm-hmm. And there's other things like, all right, I got this idea, but not really sure how we're going to do it, so let's just start today mm-hmm. and then see where it goes. So do you think as an artist um, you kind of have to relinquish these rules we put for ourselves like like deadlines of being quote-unquote consistent or saying i have to get this finished do you have to balance wanting to be somebody that's consistent and hardworking, but Mm -hmm. also somebody that is going to allow their their mind to just kind of flow the best way to describe it is you have to know the rules you're not you have to know how to do it but then you can also break the rules Hmm. like one thing my mentor told me when he was teaching me um, art, and she was like, "I'll t- I'll show you, like I'll I'll show you the rules, but then it's up to you how you want to break them. Mm. Like, there's there's no rules after you learn the rules, but you do need to know how things work. So you have yeah. to have structure. You can't just say, we're just gonna wing it every time. Yeah, like that's just it never works. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it works for people, but for me, I know I'm a structural, organizational person, mm-hmm. so I need. I need that structure, but I also need that freedom to flow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, it's a balance. And then, kind of, could you kind of show the contrast between that type of mindset when it comes to the prestige world? Mm-hmm. What changes in that mindset when it comes to the drawing and the more um, mm-hmm. sketch world? The way I look at drawing versus prestige is like prestige is just so like just doing it as we go, mm-hmm. you know, just cultivating, cultivating as we go. Same with the art in like a macro way, but art is more micro than it is mm. macro because each piece is special. Mm. Each piece is telling a story. And sometimes each piece will uh, work together with another piece to then create a bigger story. Like I do collections, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, it's, it's different. So going really into the, um, the sketching side and the artistic side, um, what does that process look like on a day-to-day basis? Okay, so well, art, I try to always start my day just, you know, working out, basically. Mm-hmm. Just not working on a, an original first, just just flowing. Um, whether it's just sharpening uh, tools, just like structure, faces, and just fundamental stuff. Yeah. And then, then I'll get into a, an original. Hmm. Um, and so it's always accompanied by music or hmm. something to just you know listen to, watch, um, movies, stuff hmm. like that. But um, that's it. Just you know, just that's just me and my space. And um, like, how much time do you spend? Like, could it could it range from? It could range from anywhere from one hour to six hours mm-hmm. at a time. Like, I remember, well, like, like three three hours at a time. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take a break in the middle. Like we did. When I was uh, doing design, uh, when I was studying design, we would do three hours in the morning, three hours after lunch, and so I just got used to that. Yeah. And then um, on like a peak day, I'll wake up at six a.m. 
I'll draw from 7 to... No, if I wake up at 6 a.m., I'll draw from like 6.30 to 8.30. And then I'll take a shower, eat breakfast, and really start my day at like 9.30. And then 9.30 to 12 is a studio session. Lunch, 12 to 1. And then 1 to 4, studio session. Take a nap from 4 to 5. Wake up, do some type of exercise from like 6 to 7. And then eat seven to eight, and then nine till like two a.m. I'll draw again. And some some would say like like if you take out the art aspect and you place it with any work, like that's insane work hours. Yeah. Um. Could you kind of speak on the importance of like doing something you love to do, and then how it allows you to really outwork everybody else? If you're doing what you love to do, it's never going like drain you. I feel like you may be exhausted because you're working hard, but it's mm-hmm. never going to drain you mentally, physically, spiritually, yeah. emotionally. If you're doing if you're on the right path it shouldn't be like that like for me yeah i've had my days where i'm burnt out but like it's because i'm putting my all into Mm -hmm. it i'm putting like i'd rather do that than i would burn out faster working an eight hour nine to five behind a desk doing what i don't want versus eight hours by myself in my own space on my own time Mm -hmm. like it's just so free yeah i agree i think i think there's a j cole bar where he was like People are sweating the booth, and he was like, I feel like I just left them a suit. So it's, it's a weird bar I remember hearing in one of his songs. But, uh-huh. like, I think it's true. Like, I think um, especially creatives or people that are doing something they truly love to do, you're kind of misunderstood because um, you're doing something abnormal. You're yeah. doing something um, in a general way. You're looking at it. It doesn't seem feasible. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But um, I think there's a different energy or a source that you're coming from when yeah. you're doing something you love to do. Like, Definitely. Um, I, I can just keep going yeah. you know i can interview all day mm-hmm. um because it's just like this ain't work you know yeah. what i mean and i think when you're drawing i see it's just your piece yeah you know it's just I mean? me like you know what i mean like it's just just another part of my day mm-hmm. and you know one of the things that it is your piece but you got to get going somehow you got to get inspired how do you how do you source that inspiration to maybe make a original piece where does it come from inspiration always just comes from just life just going mm-hmm. out and experiencing things you like going to Europe these past two weeks, I got plenty of mm. you know things that I would like to to speak on through art. Mm. Um, just going through life and experiencing things from the last few years. Now I now I can make a piece that can kind of culminate that. Now I can make a piece that can talk about this thing because I experienced it for this mm-hmm. long. But it's all just experience, dreams, um, just letting those aspirations out in the work, just building on top of ideas that you have. Not necessarily like if. Every time I go for a show, I, I plan a show, I plan it to like the highest level I possibly, I dream mm. it to the highest level I possibly can, and then it usually ends up right like below it. Yeah. down here. Oh, okay. But as long as you're uh-huh. building, 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 eventually you're going to get that one where you're like, all right, I did it. Yeah. Where'd you, where'd you get the, what's the word, the audacity to shoot high and almost understand you might not get there. Like some people would say, I want to shoot here because I know for sure I can mm-hmm. get there. Where do you where do you get that audacity from to even Definitely like back to my parents again, just having yeah. the freedom to do that. Yeah. Like a lot of people can't take these risks because they don't have the, mm. the the cushion there to to you know to do that. Like thankfully with the collector base that my dad has um shared with me basically, I've been able to I'm I'm really grateful for the people who collected my artwork when I was in college because that's when I'm just figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out, but that was when I was really just figuring it out, mm-hmm. putting things out that are really just on my mind, really saying, I'm not putting this out because I'm going to sell it because I know it's going to sell. I'm putting it out because I think this is what's up. Mm-hmm. Like I think this is dope to me. And so now that I've done that and I've been successful at it, mm-hmm. now that's the blueprint for everything. Mm-hmm. Like I'm never going to shoot for you know, anything below that, like, yeah. you still have to be practical as an artist, you still have to be, you know, you, you can't just say, all right, I'm going to do this no matter what, if I fail, mm-hmm. if I go broke, that's just not practical. Yeah, like, you can't control everything. Yeah, there's yeah. the three P's that my, that somebody told me, your professional life, your practical life, and your professional life. Did I say <laughs> professional twice? Yeah. Professional, personal. practical, and personal. Okay, I was yeah. going to say yeah. <laughs> So... Yeah, those three P's. As long as as long as your personal life is is balanced with your professional life and is balanced with your practical life, you're mm. you're good. And would you say as a creative, like they're all kind of working at the same time? Because yeah. I feel like when you're drawing, that's personal, yeah. but it's professional. Definitely. But it's- as an artist, it's it's hard because 
they're all going to intersect. They're all going to clash. But you know, you got to find that balance. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody's going to find that balance on their own. But if you ask any artist, if you ask any athlete, if you ask any entrepreneur that's really passionate about what they're doing, they they're all going to clash with those different things. Like I'm sure Michael Jordan, like he. For sure. Personal life, practical life, professional life. Like, he was just a winner. Like, yeah. all he wanted to do was win. For me, mm-hmm. all I want to do is create. Mm. So, as long as as long as long you're creating and you're creating, you're executing your vision, you can't lose. And I think one of the things I'm learning from you right now is with those three things together, you kind of have to flow it. But it's only, the only way you can flow it is if you see the opportunity in it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think as an artist, one of the things I've done with my videos is... Okay, I'm having a bad day. Let's make a video about my bad day. Mm-hmm. So, like with you, I'm having a bad month. Let's make a, a painting or whatever it yeah, may be. It's beauty and yeah, struggle. You know exactly. What I mean? It's like I don't do things. Like yeah, I I look at because just because I'm, I feel like as an entrepreneur, you always got to look at an opportunity from mm. something. Like all right, when bad things happen or unfortunate events happen or you run into these harsh realities, you got to look at it like okay, now let's make it art. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I have something on my board that I that I draw and it says, "Go through it, then make it art." Because hmm. whatever you're going that. through, you can you can find something to kind of create from it. Because yeah. everything is just an evolving experience. And I think anybody out there, whether you're an artist or whatever you are, or you working on, I think everything is art when you really look at it. Like whatever you're going through, you can make it art in some way. Yeah. Whether that's a lesson to somebody, or that's um. Just like a, a lesson you can tell somebody. Like, yeah. there's unlimited possibilities when it comes to art. Like, I know you do art and I know you you make videos, but like, what else do you see art in in mm-hmm. this world? I people hate like when artists say it, but art is literally mm-hmm. everything. And like, as an artist, like if you really want to like yeah. mess with an artist, you'll be like, oh, art is subjective. So yeah. blah blah blah. For sure, but it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. That's why when people complain about certain art, I'm like, oh, it's your opinion, but yo, it's art. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> it's meant to be experienced different ways. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I don't know, man. I, everything is art. I see basketball as art. For sure. I see entrepreneurship as art. Like, I see the way people, like, I'm just using examples for what I've seen. I've seen people who are, like, that take training seriously in basketball. That's art to them. Yeah. I see meditation as art. I see everything is... It's perspective. Yeah, it's yeah. just, like, if you look at it from an artist's point of view, that's the difference. I think it's... Not everything is art, but you can look at it from an artistic point mm-hmm. of view. Got you. And so, in art, you're kind of expressing whatever it is. Yes. But then on the other side of it, you make something. What's your goal when somebody looks at it? I'm I'm sure it changes mm-hmm. differently. Like, what are some of your goals when somebody really takes in your art? Mm-hmm. What's what are, what is your hope for them? I just want them to feel something. Mm-hmm. Like, even if it's anger, even if it's mm-hmm. sadness, you felt something. I made you feel something. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of like artwork that I've walked past and felt nothing. Like that didn't mm-hmm. move me at all. But as long as it's moving you, as long as it's making you ask questions, as long as it's making you think. I've done my job. Like it may be totally different from what I, I was expressing. Yeah, that was my next question. Yeah, yeah. Like there's like that piece behind you. A lot mm-hmm. of people just see it. Some people have said, Oh, it reminds me of church. Some people is like, Oh, it reminds me of like crying. Like the fact that it's it's reaching so many different um like feelings is great. That means it's a really a great piece. But there's also the other side of it where you have a piece where you want it to send a specific message and mm-hmm. then it lands. That's a great feeling wow. too. Because there's yeah. been times where I was like, all right, this is a piece and this is the message and it totally, people, it goes totally over yeah. their head. But it's like, hey. Like, you know what it reminds me of? Like, I feel like in school, we'll read these books and the teacher teacher is like, well, what what is the artist telling us in mm-hmm. the abstract world? And the, the artist is, I mean, the writer is dead, mm-hmm. but it's like, we have all these different opinions off of it. And I think it just goes to show like, through that passion, through that art, there's like so many ways something could come from your yeah. creation. Um, is that something you have a grasp on? Like, do you, like, one of the things for me is like when I go out and speak or I do something, I'm like, man, like, I have no idea numerically how much impact I had mm-hmm. with that. Do you have a grasp on like, like your impact? I'm starting you? to now. Like, uh, I was having a conversation with my uncle, and he was, we were just talking about wealth. Mm-hmm. And he, were, he was like, you don't understand yeah. how much wealth you've created already. Even though, like, since I don't own the pieces anymore, not necessarily, like, monetary value I'll be able to keep, but 
just the amount of wealth that I've created that's mm-hmm. on these people's walls that are going to just live and grow and, and evolve. I've put out a lot and especially the same thing with the media. Like I've told so many stories. I've connected with so many people. I've created so much community that now I have another cushion outside of my family Mm. that I've built that I can fall back on. So I'm starting to see it now that I've like graduated and I've taken the time to just really reset and recharge Mm -hmm. and just let all you're doing is going back in a circle. Like I'm literally doing the same exact thing that I was doing when I started prestige and art and everything but now i'm just back at the starting point with a whole bunch more knowledge a whole bunch more community and a lot more confidence Mm. that's the that's the difference um you know we come into this world and we're kind of taught values what to value what's most important um since you've gone through this process you just graduated college you're kind of into this new age what are some of the things you value the most now Mm -hmm. i value freedom at the highest level, mm-hmm. that's that's my number one mm-hmm. goal is freedom for me, freedom for my family, freedom for my friends, and whatever that, whatever that means to them. Mm-hmm. Some people, freedom means a lot of money. Some people, f- freedom means just ability to travel wherever they want to mm-hmm. go. Some people, freedom just means expression. Like, as long as I can help other people get closer to freedom mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form that's i'm doing my job so when i'm cultivating artwork i always try to put out narratives that are stronger and positive and not narratives that'll tear down community Mm -hmm. or anything because that's not going to get us any closer to freedom (laughs) then so that's just freedom is definitely my my main theme in life and just you know as i'm experiencing and creating things Mm -hmm. that's what i have in the back of my head at all times so freedom is something you value the most but then you also understand this impact you have how when you're creating something, you have this goal, how do you not let the responsibility like mm-hmm. put pressure on you? Because I bet if you're like creating something, um, say it's something very personal in your life, you want people to feel this. How do you not let that pressure get into way with what is a common theme? You let you let the pressure you let the pressure affect you because really? it gives you motivation. Um, you can't let it overcome you. Mm-hmm. Like I'll give you an example. Like when people say you fell in love. Mm. like i don't like to say fell in love it's a a stand in love like rather Mm. than falling like you're out of control you got to stand in it be firm in it be strong in it you know Mm. what i mean so the same thing with with pressure of like living up to certain expectations yeah like you want to you want to live up to those expectations you want to have that drive but then you can also be at peace with not getting there right now Mm. it's all about not rushing and not comparing yourself to other people and just kind of Staying in your own lane and just flying easy. Hmm. I think that was a big one. Why? Why do you think people do the, do the counter? Social media has like changed a lot of people's mm-hmm. perspectives of how successful we're supposed to be at what age. Just mm-hmm. because we see so much stuff and it's so oversaturated with what we're being thrown at. That's why. Like, if I were the richest man in the world right now, the first thing I would do is just buy a bunch of media platforms mm-hmm. just so we can start to control. Or get, gain yeah. more control of the narrative and mm-hmm. like what's affecting these people mentally. That's what I've learned. One of the most important things I learned when I was studying media studies and production is just how much the stuff that they put out in these things affect us on a grand scale. Like it, it affects us way more than mm-hmm. we understand. And so if you can put out positive stuff, if you could put out like empowering lives, things, man. it can change lives. Yeah. But I don't think that's what they want right now. No, I think you they, can they want us to stay in that cycle. So we'll buy what they want us to buy and we'll go watch what they want us to watch and so yeah. they can profit. Yeah. yeah. And basically program our minds to do. It's yeah. influencing us every, every time we turn yeah. around. Everybody is like, oh, you think it too deep into it. But I was like, yo, it's, it's really <laughs> like yeah. this, this is real life. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. And I think one of the things that you're talking about that I'm big on is like we have our passions. We have our things that we do amazing. Mm-hmm. Like you're an artist and you do all these things. But it's like we have to get the business side together yeah. because that's also where the power lies to so mm-hmm. then influence the next artist or the next whatever it may be. Exactly. Um, can you kind of give them some game on how to, okay, you have this passion. You figured out you can do all these things creatively. How do you then scale it? How do you build the business behind it? So I think... I haven't had, I don't have it figured out yet. Yeah. Thankfully, I have a family that'll back me. I have a community that supports mm-hmm. me, so I'm able to kind of test different things out. But I think it's at the end of the day, it's just having an idea, 
working at that idea a little bit every day, some mm. days a lot more than others. Yeah. And eventually it's gonna come together. Like mm. you can't you can't just do something for a month. Like you can't work out for a month and expect to gain five like five to ten pounds. Yeah. Can't like get you, abs at yeah, twenty you, crunches. Yeah, yeah, like you can't work on your handle for a month only and out of the entire year and expect to have a crazy handle. Like yeah, yeah. unless you're just really naturally gifted at it. Mm. But you just gotta, you know, put in the work but also be free to mold and into different things mm-hmm. and accept change. Um, not get too hard on yourself. Mm. Like there's a lot that goes into it, but there's just things you learn from experience. Mm. Like you don't understand any of that stuff until you experience it. Yeah. So So you seem very patient with the journey. Like yeah. there's no like I am now, but if you interviewed me like two years ago, <laughs> I probably would have been in shambles, like, yo, what am I doing wrong? Blah, blah, blah. Or, like, so like what was the perspective then? Like what was what was the goal what's the difference in goals from then to now? Mm. The goal has always been the same as to what I want to create, but it's just be How? accepting yeah. it, like that it's not going to come easy. Like I thought at at the start of this journey, like started college when I was really crafting, okay, I want to do this. I thought by the time I graduated college, like I would have it all figured out. Everything would be working by itself. I would have mm-hmm. created several different films and you know, experiences by now. And I have, but like not on the scale that I've wanted to. So it's just about having those big dreams and staying committed to those big dreams. But also the most important part is enjoying the little wins. Yeah. Like even if you got big dreams, you got to enjoy the little wins or else it's going to seem like a, just a nonstop like grind and that yeah. every, you can't live like that. Yeah. Like, and gotta, I think for me too, like I think I was like, well, when I graduate, somehow it would have just blown up. Like yeah. I didn't even have a plan yeah. to do it. And I think if you're like that, you can't enjoy the small wins because mm-hmm. you're only thinking about, you're only looking up, but you're yeah. not seeing how far you came. Exactly. And in the beginning is when you don't have the obvious wins Mm -hmm. like you're growing the the wins are usually internal like you're growing as an artist or you're growing whatever you're doing not you're not gonna get the congratulations on social media Mm -hmm. because you ain't posted enough yet or whatever it may be so it's like it's so important to be able to see that and um one of the things i've realized is while you're wanting it to speed up once you stop wanting it to speed up is when it's that's when it that's when it, it comes like when you like completely release and and just let go and just stand firm in your goals and your aspirations that's when things start to flow but when you start to force it and say all right we're gonna do this we're gonna do that it's gonna look like this it's gonna it has to look like that it can't look like this Mm -hmm. that's when things start to you know get crazy because you're trying to you trying to control the simulation (laughs) you're desperate like if if you're desperate creating art you're not gonna create great you're gonna create desperate work and Mm -hmm. you don't want to create desperate desperate work you want to create free work Mm -hmm. and so i think my favorite pieces have all come from the ones that I'm the most free and mm. the ones that um, I don't, you know, aren't my favorites are the ones that I've tried to like be so specific mm. and detailed about and just not letting the ideas flow. So it's almost like... It's like blocking energy almost. Yeah, I think people sleep on not only the energy coming through you, but like people can feel the energy in your art. Like mm-hmm. they can feel, or in networking, like you have all these relationships with people. Mm. I think people can feel like this dude is genuinely just out here doing what he thinks is his art. Like, mm-hmm. I think if somebody was coming to, to 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 record them playing basketball, you can tell they just want to get this viral video out, maybe mm-hmm. this potential. Short term, you might get something, but long yeah. term, they're not going to be able to build a brand you yeah. have. That's like, when people like ask me, like, there's people out here that try and replicate they want the my shortcut. stuff, that replicate other people's stuff that are hot. But I'm like, yo, I don't, like, I laugh. Like, yeah, it's cool, <laughs> it's funny. But I know... They're not going to yeah. do the things, build the relationships, build the community that I can do. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't sweat it. So somebody's listening, they're hearing your journey, they're liking what they hear, they maybe want to try it. What are those first steps? What are some things they can do to get started as an artist to maybe become somebody like you? Mm, just don't wait till like the perfect day. Mm. Don't wait till Monday. Everybody is always like, oh, well, once I finish this and then I'll start it, mm. or once I do this, then I'll start it. Just start today. Write something down. All you have to do is start. Like, for me, like, I'll, I'll say working on an album, right? If you work on an album and you're like, all right, when the sky is blue and it's 90 degrees outside and then we're going to do this that day, and that day never comes. Yeah. So you just got to just put stuff out all the time. And then eventually it'll cultivate. Like Uzi 
Uzi apparently makes like 150 songs yeah. a day or something like that. But Which so now wild. it's it's so difficult for him to drop this out this this album because now he has to consolidate 150 songs a day into what he's feeling at the time and what he thinks will work in this moment. Mm. So I think whoever wants to do something, whoever wants to wants to start something, yeah, to start. Yeah. And then you just got to build and not worry about when it's going to pop off, not worry about if it's going to fail, but you know, just make sure you're able to to live if it doesn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot I think a lot of people put too much pressure on their dreams and too much pressure on their aspirations. So just let it happen. You know mm. what I mean? Just let it, I love let that. it happen. Cuz I think when we're doing something and we're waiting for that perfect timing, we're we're doing all these things is because we're thinking about the outside perception. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about well, we started this way, but like when we're going about it and it's just pure everything that comes after is pure too. Like yeah. it's all coming at the right time. So like I'm much more surprised when something happens because, mm -hmm. like, I'm not needing it to happen. I'm not mm -hmm. expecting this person to say yes to come it on the podcast. It feels better, too. Yeah. Like, for me, my show that I, like, I have I spent so much time making sure that show was perfect. Mm. And so when it happened, it was like, yeah, it was great, but it wasn't, like, as good as I wanted it it's to be. It's almost like, you know what I think is similar to? It's like... Okay, I'm okay. Like it's mm -hmm. the it's a similar to like when you put that much pressure on it to be successful, whatever it is, it's like okay, I have enough money to pay for my rent. Yeah. That's not a happy feeling. That's a okay, I'm safe mm -hmm. feeling. I think we should be chasing the, yo, I got to do that feeling. Yeah. You like know? my dad, like after the show, I did after my first solo exhibition. First of all, I was exhausted because mm -hmm. I was just doing so much, so I was already just drained. But he was like, you just had. You just sold out your first solo exhibition mm. that you curated, cultivated, all that. Why are you not like riding this high right now? Yeah. I was like, one, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and two, I got big dreams. Like this yeah. is cool. Yeah. I, you know, it was cool, but I'm it was just more. it was just cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I'm I'm I want the big one, but <clears throat> that's something I had to learn. Like I do need to appreciate those moments like they are the big ones. Yeah. Because eventually that big one's gonna come and I'm gonna say, Man, I should have appreciated all these little ones along the way. Yeah, and I've realized somebody that's, and I'm sure you can relate to this, is like when you're somebody that's, you've gotten these different moments of success, like those moments only last for so long. Mm -hmm. Like getting a trophy and like maybe you were watching the finals right now mm -hmm. and these guys win this trophy, right? Um, That's a great moment. Yeah. Cool. Champagne everywhere. But um, some people live their whole lives and all they get is one moment. Like yeah. I, um, one of the reasons I started Root of Everything was because I wanted to tell people you deserve more than one moment. You mm -hmm. deserve, in the process yeah. of getting there, you deserve to be happy too. Exactly. Like I think we live in a world where people spend 22 years trying to make their parents happy by getting a diploma, which mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. But like, you just wasted 22 years of your yeah. life not being able to be happy. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's been beautiful listening to you because you're so ever flowing with everything. Like mm -hmm. you're you're getting these moments and you're mm -hmm. learning. Like there's sometimes you're yeah. pressured on you, but um. You're getting to live life. And yeah. I think life is lived with no expectations. Yeah. You know? the, like the reality of it is like you're asking me all these questions and I'm giving you all these answers. But a lot of these things, I don't take my own advice sometimes. Mm. So I clash. <laughs> like I clash with my, what I'm saying. Like so a lot of the things that I am saying are things that I should do. Mm -hmm. So whatever, like these, this, this conversation is helping me like say, okay, I need to double down mm. and just do that that I actually have been speaking on. <clears throat> and then just like... What you were saying, just you want everybody to enjoy all the moments mm -hmm. rather than just that one moment. Like if I didn't make any videos throughout the Roseville Catholic season and only was waiting for them to win the championship, mm. there would be no chronicle. There would be That's no, wild. you know what I mean? So I want to put out the that, that good game you had. I want to put out that bad game you mm -hmm. had. But I want you to see everything so that when we have that, that video of the trophy going up, you can see everything else that came before it. And there's something you said there when you were like, I'm I'm saying these things and now it's allowed me to, to realize. Mm -hmm. um, there's an overall theme in this podcast I'm hearing right now. And it's similar to when people are asking you, you know, how do you do that? Or they want the shortcut. Through the process mm -hmm. is when things naturally you come figure out. figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so like, I think we all want this shortcut. We live in the AI Google era um, and we just forget about the natural things that just pop up. Like mm -hmm. for me, like just moving around Temple, just... You can bump into somebody that's yeah. cool. Like, I think we want too much control. Yeah. And as an artist, I think you understand that. We yeah. shouldn't. It's just like, it's just a common theme in life is you got to let energy flow. 
Like you can't try and you can't try and control energy. Like you can try and you can manifest things, yeah. but you can't demand things. Yep. And I think there's there's a there's a fine line between demanding and manifesting. And, manifesting. Yep. and people cross that line a lot and they end up getting their feelings hurt because like the theme of this collection that I'm doing, Dreams and Reality, you dream too big, you're gonna run into a harsh reality. But then you dream without bound, you dream without pressure, you dream without um, any expectations, that's when you have the best realities. Mm. So Wow. Okay, okay. So kind of talk about like even more deeper into the dreams of reality and this mm -hmm. new project and the theme of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm still cultivating it, but like I have very like surface level stuff that I could share right now. But dreams in reality is just simply about just the uh, it's the pros and cons, it's love and loss, it's duality, it's mm. it's, it's um what's hard the word? Work. Um What's the symbol? I mean, it just popped in my head. Like a, like a. What's the what's the black and white? Um, yin yang. Yin yang. Yin yang. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like balance. Yeah. It's 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 just like there's two sides to everything. There's gonna be beauty. There's gonna be struggle. There's gonna be laughs. There's gonna be cries. And so, I feel like that like theme is just once you accept that balance and find that balance mm. between dreaming big dreams. And also knowing that you're gonna deal with these harsh realities. Mm. Once you accept that, you're gonna like it's gonna be beautiful. So like one thing I can say is the way it's set up is like the first half is gonna be the struggles of having to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Cause not like you have this these dreams and then you figure it out over time. All right, you're gonna run into this wall. You're gonna run into this wall, and then right in the middle, it's it's it switches. Like you get it, mm -hmm. you see it, <laughs> and then everything else is just bliss after that mm. so like that's all i can really yeah. share on it <clears throat> yeah you gotta check it out when it happens yeah like once you once you see it but um yeah it's 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 definitely something that feels the energy feels different from anything i've ever done just because it's just a fresh start being you know graduated from school and and just having that grace period between my last collection so it's, it's definitely something special it sounds beautiful because i think it's just it just explains something that we all kind of know inside of us, but we don't accept. Exactly. Like, um, like for me, one of the things that has changed my life is that yin and yang, like knowing, okay, this feels horrible, but if I have something that feels horrible, there's going to be something that feels absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. maybe even directly yeah. from this, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think I'm, I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Not only how it plays out, but like what's interesting about you and the difference between you and me is... If I have a project and it's about a topic, mm -hmm. you gonna hear me. Like right now, I'm writing my, I'm writing a book right now mm -hmm. about my life and That's all the good. lessons. And so you gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. You yeah. feel me? Ain't no hidden hidden things. And there's different types of art. Obviously, yeah. I'm very interested to see like, man, what is he thinking right here? Yeah. You know, because that's the difference, and that's what that's the same thing as yin and, and yang with it. The difference between this collection and the collections I've done before is I've left it kind of open to interpretation with the previous ones. Like I've had overall themes like. The first one was called So Much to Say because it was my first one and I mm -hmm. have, yeah. you know, so much. The second one was called Unapologetically Free. It was just, it was like peak COVID. We were all inside and I was just, it was just the aspiration to just want to be outside and free. Mm -hmm. And then when I came up with the whole Renaissance theme, I was like, okay, I'm going to have like a prelude collection to that. So, you know, like the Great Migration mm -hmm. and everybody like they, before the Harlem Renaissance, okay. that was a theme. Is like, all right, this is the migration period before I drop that Renaissance collection. So that was collections three and four. And so now this next one is just like, all right, now that we've we've started, we've like migrated towards that that movement, and now that we're started the movement, we're in it now. So yeah. there's like, there's no point in even referencing it anymore. Like, we're, be the Renaissance is just a movement. Like it's an experience now. It's not. The Renaissance is coming. Renaissance is here now. Yeah. Like, it's here. So now, what are we going to do? Now it's dreams and reality. Turn your dreams into reality. Got you. Is, like, I, I see you have this idea and it's birthed. How far out do you plan? Like, do you have projects in your head, back yeah. of your head, that you're like, one day, maybe two, three years from now, mm -hmm. this is going to be a thing? No, nah, dreams and reality is so fresh that, mm -hmm. like, I don't know you don't even think how far it. I'm going to take it, but I know I'm going to put out that first that first wave of it in the fall. Like mm -hmm. that's gonna be the first collection. Like be the Renaissance. When I when I birthed that piece, I mean that that exhibition, it was my first solo exhibition. Mm -hmm. 
And so my plan was just to build a whole brand based off mm-hmm. of that. And I still will, but I just haven't yet. Yeah. So it's just no timetable. And yeah. so I was at peace with that. Um, the dreams reality is the same thing. It's just gonna, I'm gonna let it grow. But I know these are the themes that I wanna get off. It's gonna be a lot more personal. It's gonna be a lot more, this is what this piece is talking about. Yeah. And then you can take it however it makes you feel, but this is what I intended. Usually mm-hmm. I don't like, you know, say, well, I want it to look like this. I want it to look like that. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. But got you. And so we talk about those, like, you know, the, the two positive and negatives. And then you're kind of crossing into that bliss after you went through all those things. Mm-hmm. In your life, when it comes to like you started doing art and then you started getting this like people like fans of you or like seeing you for what you do. And they're like, wow, he does great stuff, whatever it may be. Um, could you kind of talk about on the flip side where it seems amazing? It seems like happiness on social media, whatever it may be. Yeah. What are some of the downsides and negatives that you deal with that people don't see? Um... I mean, it's just the normal thing that everybody goes through, mm. like having high expectations for yourself mm. and feeling like you're not living up to them um, at a certain time. Um, and there's also just like, you know, just personal stuff, like yeah. going through relationships with people and then things that you learn with that and just losing people. There's normal life stuff. Yeah. Like, there's everybody goes through things, but... For me, I just feel like there's always in the back of my head, like, somebody's got it way worse than me. Uh, so it may not be good to think like that because you can't really compare yourself to anybody. But, you know, no, I respect everybody that. everybody has their own struggles and stuff. But for me, it just comes out in the art. So mm-hmm. it's, I've learned to just cope with that in a way Embracing where I can express it. it and embrace it, you know. Got you. So to finish off the pod, um, a couple more questions. But, like, what's the crazy big dream maybe it's the legacy after death maybe mm-hmm. it's the big dream years from now what's that thing you dream about that's down the line if i were to like dream the biggest dream possible i can see myself creating something on the scale of disney mm. where they have something where it's just multifaceted like you got disney the the amusement park that you can go out and experience. So I can see that maybe being something with like a museum or artwork, something that people go out and experience. But then you also have characters that they've made, like Mickey Mouse, that mm-hmm. have kind of grown into its own thing. They've got Disney Channel that's its own network. Yeah. Like I just see myself creating something so dense and so large and so universal that, mm-hmm. you know, like everybody can experience it and you can definitely say okay this has changed millions of lives Mm. like if that's that's the biggest dream possible is just creating something that large and that scale that can affect people on an emotional level that can like people have so many people have so many memories tied to disney just growing up watching movies growing up disney channel being there when you get home like i want to create something specifically for black people minorities and people that you know don't get that shine underrated Mm -hmm. people like there's enough stuff for people that have there there needs to be more for people that don't have yeah i I feel that and that's kind of what this is like for me it's like i want people to tell their story that don't always get their chance to tell their story but they still have amazing stories like Mm -hmm. um like people don't realize the stories that people have went through and the triumphs that it's taken. So, and I'm excited to hear that. And um, just guessing, one of the things I'm also hearing is it's probably not like something that you like. You even have a a need for. Like it's mm-hmm. like whatever unfolds in your life. It, 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 tell me if I'm right or wrong. It's like it's almost again a flow of wherever life takes me is mm-hmm. where I'm gonna go. Yeah, it's definitely. I definitely have aspirations mm-hmm. and. I think it's wherever life takes me, I'm going to go, but I know that's the goal. Like, I know gotcha. I know there's certain things in the art world I want to accomplish. There's certain things in the media world I want to accomplish. There's certain things as an entrepreneur I want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. There's certain things as a man that I want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So, I think it'll all happen. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't happen, it wasn't meant to, it happen. Wasn't meant to happen. Yeah, I feel that. Yep. Um, and so, can you leave the um, audience with any other advice or um, things you've learned in life that you think is pretty important for keeping maybe mm-hmm. your happiness or sanity? I think to stay to stay happy and to stay like free in whatever you're doing, you have to have goals. Mm. Like you can't just go into it with no no structure in mind. So that's one thing cuz that it keeps you it keeps you motivated, it keeps you going. But then have those goals and also balance out work with experience in life without work. 
experiencing mm. like everything can't be for me i'm an artist so everything i see everything like art but it yes. doesn't work for everybody like that yeah. it, it can't work for an engineer like that because some of their day has to be engineering work and some of their day has to be no engineering because you can't live like that yeah so it's just finding balance between what you have to do and what you want to do mm. um, and what you need to do mm. so yeah like the the biggest thing i could say is keep your professional life your practical life and your personal life balanced and have a goal and just do something to reach that goal every day and you will find your way facts and um to, to get a summary of everything I've heard from you, what I've learned is you do what you can control, but understand that there are things that you can't control. Exactly. Like, I think there's a big balance I see with you. It's, I'm going to do everything in my power to do the things to make it happen, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to expect it to happen because then that's messing up me doing the controllables. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to be able to do your best if you're concerned about the things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And so then you're the problem now. Yeah. And so sometimes you worry about this problem is what's causing another yeah. problem. And I can seem so like, so laid back about it mm -hmm. now and so like, oh yeah, this is just what I do. But it took it took five years to come to these yeah. conclusions. Like, so if I'm just now getting into it and I'm listening to this, I'm sure I've heard it several times where people mm -hmm. were like, oh, just take your time, blah, blah, blah. But it's something you got to experience on your own. Like I can tell people something that like, oh, don't do this because it happened to me, but maybe it won't happen to them yeah. that way. Like you can only just share your experience and transfer that knowledge and then people kind of just take what they can from it. But everybody is just, experience is different. Like that's that's what you really should should like pay attention to is everybody has a different experience. Mm. And when people can, most problems happen with people when they don't like understand the other person's like experience. That's mm. when most arguments happen because you think one way and you think another way and you can't Assuming. and yep. you like assume that both of you can't think that way without it being an issue. Yeah. Like it's you know, just just stay confident in your your dreams, stay confident in your aspirations, no matter who says you can't do that or you shouldn't do that. See for yourself. Mm. Like you make you're gonna fall down, but you'll get up. Yeah. And you'll get to learn whatever it was meant for you to learn exactly. from the experience. Exactly. And so I'll say, I mean, I'm excited for it to only have been five years and for this podcast to be as insightful. Just imagine. Like mm -hmm. I always like to tell people, whether you're still thinking about being an artist, whatever, put the time in over time. If you never quit, it's just a matter of time, man. Mm -hmm. And so for everybody at Root of Everything, we're excited to see um, this next project and all the projects that involve because, you know, somebody like you, you're going to put in the time. It's just about life coming in yeah. and just doing the rest of the work. So we're excited to hear and thank yeah, you for coming on the pod. It. I appreciate it for having me, man. Just like the consistency of, of this channel and just the messages that it's bringing out is, is what we need. It's exactly mm -hmm. what we need to to just keep keep moving the culture forward. So I'm I'm happy to <clears throat> I'm happy to be here. Um, I want more people to be on it. I'm excited to see who else is on it, and I'm excited to share the company. So got gotcha, you, thank we you gonna, again. We're gonna keep pushing out for people just like you, man. Um. You exude exactly what Rooter Everything is about. And so I appreciate you. Can you tell the people where they can get in contact with you and see mm -hmm. all your content? Um, everything is on BeTheRenaissance.com. You can see all my art there, my media there, and you can get in contact with me there. Got you. Well, y'all check them out. And we'll see y'all next time. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and comment whatever your thoughts of was of this episode. And make sure to rate us and give us something on the podcast platforms wherever you listen to. See y'all next time. Peace.